Hi, welcome to Historic City Hall Arts and Cultural Center. On exhibit we have Detour Art. It is from the collection of Kelly Ludwig and it's not to be missed. If we had to put a definition on it, technically outsider art is what people create that have really no real exposure to the arts. Sometimes it's people with mental illness. Sometimes it's people that's been imprisoned. So they have not been schooled in any kind of traditional, and this is again something that just kind of bursts forth. Academics will get in a lot of arguments about this art. I kind of group it all into self-taught. That just makes me happier. It's easier to describe it that way. But outsider art is fairly specific. So folk art, contemporary art, self-taught, Clementine Hunter. She would be a classic example of a folk artist, self-taught, she's contemporary. But she did a lot of what we call as memory paintings because she does scenes from what her life was like and what the life around her was like and has documented. Sometimes people are spoken to. The Lord, somebody, has inspired them. They have something inside of them that needs to be said, that they've had a vision that they have to get out there. William Thomas Thompson, in Greensville, South Carolina, has done these gigantic, and I'm talking about 25 feet long murals about Revelation. I mean, he just has it in him, he has to get it out. Howard Finster, who used to be angel, the trumpeting angel at the very beginning, apparently people from other places speak to Howard every night around midnight, or spoke to Howard every night around midnight. And if you ever turn over the back of his artwork, you will see a time that he writes down when he created this art, because this was the time when someone had spoken to him. So there's people that have vision. And I'm not going to say that they're crazy. I believe them. Elephants in the room, elephants in the room. So, but whatever it is, they've created unbelievable art that I am absolutely crazy about. You'll see that the show is broken up into regions. Part of it is because, no offense, the Deep South gets all the credit for folk art. So I'm trying to show that really it is. It's everywhere. It's in everybody's backyard. The Midwest seems to be particularly strong in folk art environments. I like to think it's because we have a lot of space. You know, there's a lot of rocks, there's a lot of resource, and we just have a lot more room. There is a grotto that's in West Bend, Iowa, called the Grotto of Redemption, which is, again, a spectacular place that was built at a time when car trips and stuff were kind of a novelty, and people would come see it, and they would be so inspired that they would go and build their own. You see this, and like, I want to do this. I want to create. The Northeast has a few of the environments. You all know this area. Hotbed of art. I don't know what you all are drinking down here in the water, I'm assuming, but there is something going on because there's the majority of the art you'll see upstairs is from this region. Southwest, too. A lot of environments, they have a lot of space, and you're going to have a lot more of like the Native American influences. And then we have the West Coast, so. Leonard Knight's right from right there. You have Watts Towers, another great spot in there in Los Angeles. And then you have just some great artists all up and down the coast. So it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend if you can get in the car, drive. You don't need to fly, really. You're missing a lot. Sadly, um, Sam Morales has passed away, so his, his environment is gone now. But Sam, the uh, first birdhouse he ever made was a wedding present to his wife of the church that they got married in. And she loved it. And that then inspired him to do more. <laughs> and more he did. So this is inside this backyard, kind of like a little kind of a courtyard. And it was just stacked with birdhouses. I mean, it's, it's, it was crazy. Basically, Detour Art is the collection that was inspired by working with the guys from Rare Visions and the Travelopedia. This book here has a lot of the addresses and ways to find the people that are on the road that we're talking about. So if you ever inspire to get in the car and go see them, that would be the book to get. And then if not, if you've got an iPhone, best road trip ever, it's got released last week. So we're pretty excited about that. For more information, visit our website at cityoflakecharles.com or Facebook group, or you can call 491-9147.